Hello and welcome back to our business tips. Michael Lapid here talking to you about the five steps to financial freedom, both for individuals and business owners. And we are in step four, accumulate wealth and increase passive cash flow. The only step that has two because we want to do them simultaneously, increase our wealth while we increase our passive cash flow. Wealth accumulation is an important step towards financial freedom and at the day, end of the day we need to understand what that means. And the foundation of that is understanding what the difference of wealth, riches and money is. Wealth, a very important factor of something that's tangible and will be there. Riches, forms of paper that you invest in that you can make great returns or great losses on. And money, the medium of exchange, which is just a form of payment or a form of matter that you can make exchange with. Now, at the end of the day, we want to know that this is an important topic, but that you are not alone in it. You have support. This is where you go to the financial planners, the accountants, the wealth planners, and so forth to get help with this step and not doing it on your own. You need accountability and you need transparency. The idea of wealth is that we want to preserve it, and that's in our next step five, wealth preservation. And we want to look at if we're going to pass it on to next generations or if we're going to give it to charity and so forth. We need to plan well into the future when it comes to our wealth. Now, equally important as our wealth accumulation happens, we want to increase passive cash flow because eventually the passive cash flow will take off from your active cash flow. So actively means you're earning it. Passive means the money's working for you. We want to make money our slave. We take the money, we put it into what we're earning money from and let it earn the money while we sleep, so to speak, right? That's the idea of the passive cash flow. We want that continuously coming to us so eventually we can divert it, we can replace lost income, we can invest it further. We have lots of options to do with that passive cash flow. Here are a few other key points about step four. Make sure you're active in your investments. Get the financial planners, the wealth planners, the estate planners, the accountants, the lawyers. Get everybody involved, yes, but be active yourself. Be monitoring things, be looking at things, be on top of things yourself while you have your board of wise advisors. You need to maximize uh, moving and tax minimum withdrawal. So when you're doing RSPs, make sure you're maximizing with your taxes. With the accountant, the tax planning comes in. Don't just go, yeah, I'm gonna put much money into the RSP and then you know, and then my TFSA. Plan it out. What is the best use of your money? Where's the best platform to invest it from? Is it an RSP? Is it TFSA? Is it non-registered? What is the best avenue? We also want to understand the difference of capital appreciation versus cash flow. We want our capital to appreciate, but we like cash flow and cash flow should be a primary focus. We also want to make sure we have a management plan for our capital. What is the plan to manage our capital over the next five years? We want to look at pillars for our investing and make sure we have strong, strong ethics in our investing. We want to make sure we know where to find money to invest. If something good comes, like Bitcoin's going to shoot through the roof, where are we going to find money to put into Bitcoin or whatever it is? I'm just using an example. It could be a certain stock, an IPO. It could be anything. Where can you find money when you need it, when the opportunities are there? Are you liquid or do you have a way to become liquid for that or access capital? We need to also look at structuring for our investments. How are we structuring? Are we investing through a trust, a corporation, a partnership? Are we investing personally? Our spouse investing? We're investing. We're splitting the investment. Structuring where we invest and how we invest is also very important. And we want to look at using capital gains as much as possible and secondary to that dividends, especially eligible dividends from Canadian corporations. And then below that would be your interest income and your other sources. But capital gains is only taxed on half of the gain. It is the best form of investment income you can receive from a tax perspective. We want to make sure we analyze the statements we receive on the investments or financial statements on the company or whatever you're investing in, you want to take time to analyze it. Again, staying on top of things. We want to understand the different types of investment, paper investments versus actually holding the asset, right? So do I hold a piece of paper or do I hold the asset? If I bought gold, did I buy a piece of paper and it says I have gold or do I got gold, right? And we, there's different purposes for different types. So we want to make sure you understand. Same with, you know, commodities and currencies and crypto and all these different types of investing. We want to make sure we look at options such as, you know, what is a dividend reinvestment plan, a drip, your various options when it comes to investing. And again, it comes down to planning.
That is the most important thing that you can remember when it comes to your wealth and having that board of wise advisors around you to guide you. If you got any questions, we'd love to hear from you. Post in the comments below and we'll see you in the next video.